Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for August 23rd, 2022. I'm going to be reporting today on the trend of escalation of military conflict as a result of a development which occurred near Moscow on August 20th, as well as the ongoing deterioration of most of the economies of the transatlantic world and the world as a whole. But let's begin with the ominous development near Moscow, where a car bomb killed Daria Dugina, the daughter of Alexander Dugin, a fairly well-known Russian ultranationalist. The FSB, the Federal Security Bureau of the Russian government, has provided some details identifying an agent of Ukraine's secret services as the assassin. Uh, Dugina is a journalist, an activist, as I said, the daughter of Alexander Dugin. Uh, the Ukrainian officials are denying that they had any involvement in this. But the Russian spokesman, including the head of the Donetsk People's Republic, said if Ukraine's role is verified, quote, then we are talking about a policy of state terrorism carried out by the Kyiv regime, unquote. Now, what should be investigated here is not simply the crime scene, but the ongoing collaboration between NATO special operations forces and the Ukrainians. There was an article in the New York Times last week detailing the role of the British special forces in training saboteurs and assassins of Ukraine who are operating behind the lines in, in the Russian-controlled areas of eastern Ukraine. Uh, we've also seen an escalation in drone attacks in Crimea, uh, as well as very suspicious and likely Ukrainian attacks into Russia. Now, this is, of course, extremely dangerous. You're playing with fire. But the deeper problem is that the West has cut off diplomatic channels with Russia. And this has come from the United States, from the British and NATO. Who is there to negotiate with? Zelensky keeps saying he wants to negotiate with Putin, but he's being told by Biden, by Boris Johnson and others not to negotiate, to continue fighting as NATO pours in more weapons in what will most likely be a losing cause in Ukraine. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, when the world came very close to nuclear war in October 1962, there were extensive back-channel negotiations conducted between, on behalf of John F. Kennedy, the U.S. president, and Nikita Khrushchev, the Russian leader. This probably prevented nuclear war. Are there such channels today? If so, are they being used? The Russians are saying no. The Russian ambassador in Geneva to the UN agencies, Gennady Gavilov, said, quote, I do not see any possibility for diplomatic contacts, unquote. He added that the longer the conflict continues, the more difficult it will be to have a diplomatic solution. Well, as I reported the other day, President Putin at the Moscow International Security Conference said that it's not Russia which is isolated, but the West, which is becoming increasingly isolated from the rest of the world. This became clear at a discussion that took place yesterday of the UN Security Council session that was called by China, because China is now the temporary chair of the UNSC, to discuss the topic of maintaining peace and security through dialogue and cooperation. The Many of the countries involved in the Security Council took up multiple topics on, on the whole question of addressing food insecurity, uh, the, the question of ending wars, multilateral cooperation to do that. And what was clear is that the only countries that were not interested in this dialogue were the United Kingdom and the United States. The ambassadors from those two countries use their time to denounce Russia and not to address any of the substantive issues that were put on the table by the other members of the assembly. 
The Indian ambassador, for example, spoke of the need for new financial and security architecture, which is what the Schiller Institute has been saying is absolutely necessary to escape this moment in history without serious consequences. But that's not in the interest of the unipolar strategists who are dictating the policy to the Western world and are attempting to bully the rest of the world to submitting to it. One of the problems they're having is that the policies coming from the transatlantic region, especially from London and Wall Street, are leading to an escalating economic breakdown. And this is going to create a hot autumn in response. We have a preview of this going on in England right now, where dock workers are on strike at one of the largest ports uh, over low wages. This is going to add to the existing freight backlog, the supply chain issue. We also have farmer protests that are gearing up for the end of the harvest period throughout Europe. Truckers are demonstrating over high gas prices. There's an overall economic crisis, which is barely reflected other than snippets here and there about inflation. Now, on the inflation front, the Bank of England forecasters estimate a 13% inflation rate in the United Kingdom by the end of the year. But UK analysts at Citigroup said it's more likely to be 18% and will peak at over 20% early in the year. Retail energy prices for uh, the United Kingdom will triple from now until April 2023, driven by spot market speculation, not by shortages. They, they use the threat of shortages to drive up the price. Uh, these price problems are also driven by the EU green policy. The German Bundesbank president, Nagel, said that consumer inflation will exceed 10% in Germany by September. Uh, my personal view is that it's already higher than that if you look at food prices and utility prices. Now, all of this has been driven by the policies of the U.S. Federal Reserve and the other central banks, all of which act on behalf of the interests of private banks and financial institutions, not governments. The use of quantitative easing to address the debt crisis, which took off again in September 2019, has been detailed by me in, in many past uh, updates. But the trillions of dollars that have been pumped into the financial system are not going to physical goods production. They're going into in increasing the debt by providing funds for speculation. That's what drives inflation. And now we have higher interest rates, which are leading to a surge in the dollar, which has a negative effect on every other currency in the world. By collapsing foreign currencies, it increases the cost to those countries for importing goods. And that's a source of inflation outside of the United States. In the United States, it's we're still paying for the uncontrollable debt bubble that was created, not just by COVID and the war, but by the failure after 2008 to address the wrong-headed policies of the Federal Reserve in that period. Instead of writing down debt or writing off debt, they continued to keep debt on the books of financial institutions at face value and then speculate on driving it up for the purposes of speculative gains, not for improving the fiscal circumstances of those corporations, which are now zombie corporations. That is, they don't make enough profit to cover the interest on their debt. That's why they need constant bailouts. Now, we also see in the United States, credit card rates are going up, which will have an effect on con the consumer side of the economy and a collapse in housing, especially in new mortgages. So what does this mean for the immediate future? Well, we have endless war brought to you by the military industrial complex and the war hawks that they finance, who control both parties in the United States and all major governments in Europe. Secondly, inflation leading likely to credit uh, collapse, uh, uh, a tsunami of defaults, 
all of which will be triggered by the policies dictated by the financial cartels, including the largest banks such as J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and others, and also financial institutions such as BlackRock and Vanguard. Now, these financial predators will be meeting at the end of the week for their annual get-together in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, keep in mind, it was in the Jackson Hole meeting in 2019 where the decision was made to launch the Great Reset by creating a, an alliance of banks and financial institutions that would not only centralize credit policy, but would insist on controlling fiscal or spending policy. This happened in August 2019, driven by the policies of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, Prince Charles, and their, their fair-haired banker, Mark Carney, who announced that they were going to reach an agreement to lend money only to green policies and cut off credit to any country, company that 